I'm Steve Shuttle with Sea Island Forge. Today I'm going to be going over some accessories, tips, tricks, and safety features of our kettles with you. If you have any further questions, our owner's manual is always a good resource to go back to. Today I'm talking about our fire kettles that we make. This is our 30 gallon we have in front of us. I also have a 50 gallon kettle. We're also gonna be talking about some of the accessories that we engineer, design, and forge and fabricate for our fire kettles. These accessories are specifically for Sea Island Forge's fire kettles. Do not use them on somebody else's fire kettle or fire pit. And they may break your fire pit, it may break your kettle, and it may cause a dangerous situation. Please do not ever use one of Sea Island Forge's accessories on somebody else's fire pit or somebody else's fire kettle. These are designed to be safe fire kettles. The bowl is not attached to the stand. So if for some reason you're setting your kettle up in your backyard and your yard's a little out of level, you can always level your kettle in the stand pretty easily. It's not that heavy using your fire poker, especially if it's lit or just as a good habit. Even if it's not lit, get into the habit of always using your fire, your fire poker. The twisted metal ring on the stand is actually a safety device. It's called the boot rail. Now don't twist that metal together because it looks good. What it does is it maximizes the surface area to dissipate heat. So even with a really hot fire going, this boot rail will never get hot enough to burn you. Let's say you're setting your kettle up for the first time in your backyard and you haven't prepared your patio the way you want it yet and you're gonna burn on top of your grass. You never want to set your kettle up on top of combustible material. If you're in that type of situation, you always want to put down a layer of pavers that are at least an inch and a half thick, and it needs to be laid under the entire body of the bowl. An example of some pavers that we've used in the past are these modular concrete pieces. We've also used bricks. And once again, just make sure they're at least an inch and a half thick. And then we've used larger pavers like this. So any of those will do. The bottom of the kettle does get very hot, so you want to make sure you have that thermal break between the underside of the bowl and any combustible material. So earlier we cleaned the kettle, and typically when I'm cleaning the kettle, first of all what I'll do is I'll get a, a shovel, and then I'll get a fire-safe bucket. It needs to be metal, and it needs to have a tight-fitting lid. And I scoop the ashes out of the kettle, put them in the bucket, make sure the lid is sealed on it. Never put your ashes in anything that can burn or catch fire. Okay, so we already have cleaned the ash out of the kettle with our shovel and put it in the fire safe bucket. The next step is to take some regular vegetable oil, and I typically do this on the inside of the bowl and on the lip. For the outside of the bowl, it's easier for me if I actually use a can of cooking spray instead of trying to wipe under the bottom of the bowl with my hand. So cooking spray is great for the outside, vegetable oil is good for the inside. Now to do the inside, you want to grab a rag and a rubber glove is always nice as well. And you can actually pour the oil and you, probably easier to pour it towards the top of the lip and let it run down into the bowl. And then you can take your rag and spread that around inside the bowl. Now it's going to leave an oily sheen on the bowl. So if you see any spots that are looking dull, they probably need a little bit more oil. So just Pour a little more oil on them, or you can pour some oil directly on the rag and wipe them if you don't want to pour it into the bowl. And just wipe your kettle down so it has a nice sheen on it. And you're just protecting this cast iron kettle just like the cast iron skillets in your kitchen. Now, some people don't like their kettle to look new. They want it to have that patina on it, that aged look, kind of the oxidized metal look. It's not gonna harm your kettle at all. It should do fine. Now, if you see some rust on your stand and you don't want that patina, then you can use a rattle can of Rust-Oleum high heat spray paint and that will help take care of any rust you see on your stand. 